Hello and welcome to the Maritime Impact Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Nyhus, Director Environment for Maritime at DNV. The topic of this episode should come as no surprise to anyone. I'll be walking you through what happened at the latest IMO and EPC meeting, where most of us went in with clear expectations that a new regulatory framework for shipping decarbonization would be adopted. As I trust most of you are aware, that did not happen. So today I'll shed some light on what actually took place, what it means for the industry, and what we think will happen next. We hope you enjoy this episode, and now on to the show. As I have talked about before, at MEPC 83 in April this year, the IMO approved the Net Zero Framework, the regulatory package designed to facilitate the decarbonization of shipping through a combination of technical and economic instruments. This was in response to the IMO's 2023 greenhouse gas strategy, unanimously established to make shipping carbon neutral by or around 2050. Once adopted, it was expected that the net zero framework would enter into force in March 2027 and become effective on January 1st, 2028. I won't go into the technical details of how the regulation would work. For that, I refer you to earlier episodes. But suffice it to say that this carefully negotiated regulation and associated timeline did not get adopted during the meeting this October. So what happened? And what changed? As I also talked about earlier this year, the decision to approve in April was contentious. We had the US boycotting the meeting and issuing a strongly worded diplomatic demarche against it. We had a vote on the approval, which almost never happens. And we had a block of countries being vocally against the framework. But there was a very robust majority in favor of it, and that majority was expected to be more than enough for adoption in October. While the fact that only Marple Annex 6 parties would be part of the decision-making process played into this analysis, even more significance was placed on the fact that the supporting member states essentially consisted of most of the world's key shipping countries, as well as the majority of flag states. In simple terms, adoption is a numbers game, and the numbers were favorable. So fast forward to the adoption meeting itself, the so-called MEPC ES2 meeting. There was a huge interest. We had 1,500 delegates registered for physical participation, but there was also a tangible sense of nervousness at the meeting from the outset. This was driven in part by the importance of the decision at hand, but also by a rumor mill in overdrive, where much of the speculation centered around pressure being brought to bear by the United States. Everyone in attendance was aware of a press release issued by the US administration in August, making clear their opposition to the framework, along with a list of potential reciprocal actions against anyone voting for it. But this was generally seen as more of the same that we saw back in April. What was new, however, was all the stories spilling out about recent diplomatic pressure being brought to bear, pressure that went well beyond anything previously seen in public. Now, during the meeting, many member states raised concerns on a range of issues related to the framework. This included the governance and operation of the Net Zero Fund, the incomplete state of the life cycle assessment guidelines and the lack of a clear pathway for the use of LNG, the lack of agreement on how support of companies investing in low carbon solutions should be structured, and the lack of alternative fuel production capacity. These were all well-known concerns, which had also been discussed at the time of approval at MPC 83. However, they were given even more emphasis this time around. Even more significantly, it was notable that many member states who were previously clear in their support of the new regulations were now being quiet. And it seemed obvious that this was to a very large degree due to the intense diplomatic pressure being felt from the United States. The implications soon became clear there was no longer full certainty about the strength of the support for the net zero framework. After last ditch efforts to reach consensus, the meeting devolved into procedural pandemonium on Friday. Multiple calls for various votes were made, procedural motions were tabled, and no clear consensus was in sight. The procedural wrangling was brought to an end by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, a vocal opponent of the net zero framework, who tabled a motion to adjourn the meeting for one year. 
under the rules of procedure for MPC, this had to be handled immediately. A vote on whether to adjourn the meeting was duly held and passed, and a majority of 57 member states voted for, 49 against, and 21 abstained. And that was it. Without any decisions being made on the framework itself, we are now on a one-year coffee break and will resume the meeting where we left off in October 2026. So where do we stand now? First off, I want to stress that this was an extraordinary session of the MEPC in more than just name. It's really the first time I've seen geopolitics intrude in such a way. One point which is important to emphasize is that we have not made any decision on the framework itself. We have merely agreed to adjourn the discussions and resume in one year's time. So the framework is not dead. It's not agreed. Instead, it is simply sitting in the procedural equivalents of purgatory until we reconvene. Of course, the envisaged entry into force date of March 2027 is blown and has been pushed back by at least a year. And this was reflected in the proceedings the week after. The intercessional working group on greenhouse gases met as planned and, as instructed by MPC 83, continued its deliberations on developing the guidelines which underpinned the framework. In light of what had happened the week before, it has to be admitted that the energy level was not what it would have been if the framework had been adopted, and the sense of urgency was certainly not there. But in all fairness, there were good discussions on issues such as fuel certification, LCA guidelines, the fund and reward mechanisms, greenhouse gas fuel intensity calculation guidelines, and the greenhouse gas fuel intensity registry. A fifth IMO greenhouse gas study was also discussed in detail. But no significant decisions were made, and the technical work will continue at the next intercessional meeting and during MEPC 84 itself, which have been arranged to take place back to back in April 2026. And speaking of MEPC 84, with respect to the continuation of the adoption meeting in October next year, it will be up to the member states at MEPC 84 to decide if this is going to be a straightforward continuation or if there will be modifications to the agenda, potentially allowing for changes to the text up for adoption. It's all a bit intricate, but depending on what is agreed by MEPC 84 and what the actual outcome of the October meeting is, we have scenarios for the final outcome then ranging from simply moving straight to a vote to a full renegotiation of the agreement with all the risks and delays that that will entail. To be very blunt, the crystal ball remains extremely murky for now. So, a quick summary. The IMO Net Zero framework is not dead. The adoption meeting was merely adjourned, giving the IMO a one-year postponement of the decision whether to adopt or not. That also gives the MEPC one year to further work on the technical guidelines, maybe alleviating some of the concerns that have been raised. But that does not change the underlying political question. Will the position of the USA change in a year? And I think the answer to that is a clear no. That then begs the question of how other member states will respond to US pressure next time around. In the coming year, I expect to see significant efforts expended at finding practical tweaks which could allow the framework to survive the political pressures. But only time will tell if that is possible. You've been listening to the Maritime Impact Podcast from DNV with me, Eric Nyhus. Later this year, we will be back with more on the UK and the EU, no surprises there, and who knows what else. But it will all be about shipping's journey towards decarbonization. If you enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to give us a rating or a review. Thank you for listening.